The North America truck sales hit a record high in September, an indication that truck ordering activity has picked up in a big way. Samvardhan Madhusan has about 7 to 8% of its revenues that comes from that market. In fact, let's clarify that with Vivek Chan Segal, the chairman at Samvardhan Madhusan International. Mr. Je Mr. Segal, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, I want to start by asking you about the recent order backlog in North America, which was surprisingly positive uh, after many months. How do you see the demand trends in that market? And how much of your own business comes from there? Uh, North America is about 18% of our turnover. We have 31 facilities and about 27,000 people mm. working in North America. So it's pretty uh, important. Um, uh, yes, the numbers are good and uh, they're going to be uh, better. So the indications are. But, uh, you know, we're... we're uh, Delighted that America is doing well. Um, I think uh, all other uh, countries are a bit weak, but uh, America is doing very well. So that's good news. Okay. Um, so you said that North America totally is about 18% of your business. Within that, how much comes from uh, the truck and tractor segment? And over there, how is the ordering activity? Uh, because, you know, generally May to September is a lean season, but this time ACT research told us that uh, a lot of the ordering was done in September itself. Uh, so how do you see the next three, four months shape up? No, I think uh, uh, there is no reason to uh, uh, doubt the uh, optimism. I think uh, the uh, uh, American market looks strong. Uh, it still hasn't uh, beaten August 21, but uh, I think in the coming months it's going to do better. Okay, that's on America. I wanted to understand what's happening in Europe because we're hearing that a lot of OEMs are cutting their growth targets now for the full year because of the energy crisis in Europe, because of the supply side shortages. Uh, are you facing challenges there even now? And if yes, could you just throw some light on what's the situation on the ground? Well, uh, Europe is doing uh, well, uh, reasonably well. Uh, uh, we've just opened two facilities in Europe. So um, the order book is strong, but uh, yes, some challenges are there. Uh, there is a lot of uh, thinking as to what's going to happen with the power crisis. I, I, I think the government of Europe is very uh, uh, cognizant of the fact that there is going to be a power issue. And uh, you should always remember that when COVID times, the response of the European uh, companies, uh, sorry, European uh, countries, to the manufacturing problems of uh, their factories, which are there, was phenomenal. Even before we could uh, apply, we had already got the money into our banks to support the workforce and all that. So I'm not worried about Europe at all. I think that the government is very in sync with the industry. And uh, there are ways and means that they're thinking of uh, ways how they can uh, uh, mitigate all these uh, particular issues. So I'm not so worried about my mother's, uh, our plants in Europe. Okay, not too worried about the plants in Europe. But could you help us understand what could the cost impact be, sir, for companies, uh, your own subsidies like SMR, SMP, because of the rising energy costs? So on one hand, you have the rising energy costs, but on the flip side, raw material costs are cooling off. So net-net, what could the effect be for you? Uh, it's I don't make one product, Sonia. So, uh, you know, that uh, manages, uh, we have to really calculate all that. But uh, we, we produce over 30,000 different components, so it's very difficult to give you an off-the-cuff answer. But again, I'm telling you, the fact that in Europe, especially in Europe, I think the governments are very in sync with what's happening to the uh, factories over there. They are very worried about their people. So they have already got some plan to mitigate this particular thing. That's my feeling, personal feeling. Mm. Uh, about 25% of your 2025 revenue guidance is expected to come from the non-auto segment, Mr. Segal. So just wanted to understand a little more about that, the progress in um, several other pockets, whether it's aviation, medical, logistics. Um, what would the trajectory look like? Thanks, uh, Sonia. The uh, thing is like this. In November, we are going to have the uh, midterm review of our five-year plan 
and we would be sharing it with all the um, investors and uh, uh, our uh, media and all that. So you just have to wait for another month or so, month and a half, and uh, we will tell you. But yes, the progress is very good. In spite of two and a half years of the first five of this five-year plan uh, covered with COVID, please believe me, the trust, the uh, the progress is very good. Okay, that's on the non-auto business. But coming back to the main passenger vehicle, the the you know auto business, I uh, wanted to understand what the demand trends are like. You spoke about Europe and how you're not too worried over there. Over there. Uh, what about markets like China, uh, the U.S. overall, not just North America? Because you know we just got some data from Tata Motors where the retail sales for Jaguar Land Rover have seen a dip. Um, in fact, uh, you know one of the pockets saw even a double-digit dip. The Jaguar business saw a double-digit dip uh, compared to last year. So, just wanted your sense of how uh, the luxury auto market is doing in China as well as in the U.S. So, I think uh, in U.S. and all that, it's a no-brainer. It's doing very well. I think China, they are grappling with uh, some COVID issues and also the uh, there's a Congress going on over there for the appointment of the third term of presidency. So, I think there's uh, some... Uh, uh, disruptions over there for, for some time. But once this Congress is over uh, and all that, and they, they solve the problem of uh, COVID lockdowns, et cetera, I think it's going to become very bad, very, very good, because the people will have huge demand, which is pent up demand, will come back. Just uh, 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 we have to be patient for a month or so. Uh, I think globally, it's uh, the markets are looking good. Uh, the luxury demand cars are, is doing very well. There's waiting lists of two years, four years. I mean, uh, it's unheard of. Hmm. It's unheard of. Okay, that's great to hear. Finally, then a question on the uh, you know margin performance as well. I mean, it has been a, a challenging last few We're quarters. We are in quiet period. I cannot give an answer to that. All right, Mr. Segal, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot for stopping by and speaking to CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your thoughts. Uh, that is uh, somewhere than Madison speaking about the North American truck orders. They say 18% of their business comes from North America, and that market is firing on all cylinders. And they are not too worried about Europe, although there are challenges there. China is also grappling with COVID issues, so some problem pockets for sure. But then uh, you know, there's a ray of hope in North America. The North American market needs to fire a little less. Right? Yeah. It'll solve a lot of problems with <laughs> rate increases, etc. But uh, that's Madison for you. 200 points are down on the Nifty, by the way. So it's uh, still there. I mean, it's, there's no great uh, change or there's no great pullback or anything of that sort. Uh, just, uh, you know, what, 30 minutes of trade. So still very, very early uh, uh, part of the uh, trading session. We'll take a quick break here. We'll come back and uh, we'll be joined by Hitesh Oberoi. Uh, at uh, Info, I should discuss the hiring trends, especially what's happening on tech hiring. Uh, and, uh, of course, a little bit of the outlook on the company. Later, we'll also be joined by Patanjali Keswani, Chairman and Managing Director at Lemon Tree Hotels, to discuss how business uh, has uh, panned out, how occupancy, etc., is looking ahead.